Yesterday in the Daily Telegraph, a poll said, if Lisbon goes through without a referendum, would you want Britain to stay part of the European Union? For the first time in over 30 years, a massive majority of Britons will want us to leave this European Union if Mr Barroso gets his way. So maybe I've got it wrong, maybe you're the right man, we will see. Yes, he's very happy to go. We need democratic solutions to this. If you go on pushing your extreme Euro-nationalism, this will lead to violence. We must vote against this Commission. We must put the future of Europe to people in every member state in free and fair referendums. Thank you. But what really matters is the loss of democracy here. You have not been elected. You are not accountable. There is no mechanism for the peoples of Europe to remove you. It was Zeus, of course, that kidnapped Europa. My fear is you are kidnapping our democracy. You are only here because that Lisbon Treaty went through without the British people being given the referendum that they were promised. And as far as we're concerned, this is unfinished business. People fought and died so that we could be an independent, self-governing, democratic nation that was able to hire and fire its leaders, and no one that believes in democracy will accept the post of President of the European Union. Thank you. In fact, I hope you're all very proud of yourselves, because what you've done is you've taken the littlest boy in the playground, got him into the corner, and given him a good kicking. This is a victory for the bully boys. It's a victory for big money, and it's a victory for bureaucrats. In historical terms, I think Britain now finds herself very alone, perhaps as she was back in 1940. As far as I'm concerned, this Irish referendum begins the real debate. There's no more pretending. If you want national democracy, you cannot remain a member of this European Union. And we will campaign for Britain to leave and to leave Danny as soon as possible. Nigel Farage. The Independence and Democracy Group has tried to be helpful, positive and constructive right through this parliamentary term. Um, yes, because we've been providing the voice of opposition. And in a democracy, opposition is essential. It is vital. But sadly, as President Baclav Klaus pointed out when he came here, you don't actually think there should be any alternative view. And as a result of that, your presidency has been marked by your deeply prejudicial manner in, which, in, in the way in which you've treated members of this House that have stood up and opposed the Constitution stroke Lisbon Treaty. And the defining moment for me in this House was we had the French say no, we had the Dutch say no, and then we had the Irish say no, and this Parliament has willfully carried on ignoring the wishes of the people. You just don't get it, do you? No means no. And it's truly, it's truly incredible that 499 members of this House voted to ignore the Irish no vote and to continue with the treaty. What kind of a parliament is this? If you believed in democracy, you would not just bulldoze aside those three referendum results. And worse still, worse still, you are now so fearful of public opinion, you know that you're losing the argument, that you've sunk to abuse. I've had Mr Watson saying that I behave like an English football hooligan, when all I did was to gently point out that Commissioner Barrow is a convicted embezzler. Gary Titley said that I was a paranoid reactionary, living on the fringes of society. Well... I mean, he may have a point, I don't know. But Denny Cohn-Bendit, that great champion of free speech, said that opponents of the treaty were mentally ill. And Martin Schultz, the leader of the Socialists, saying after one of the no votes, we must not bow to populism, and that the no votes open the door to fascism. Well, I hope in the next four weeks in this campaign, the voters of Europe can see the real face of this project. You are nationalistic, you are bullying, you are threatening, you are anti-democratic, you're a complete shower. But it's when it comes to Ireland that I really get interested, because you said that you wanted there to be a credible policy for Ireland. 
with their second referendum. And so you produce these guarantees, and here they are, guarantees on the right to life, on taxation, on security and defence. Uh, this document has no legal force whatsoever. It is not worth the paper that it's written on. You are the author of a disgraceful attempt to con the Irish into voting for this Lisbon Treaty in their forthcoming referendum. Of course, you've been supported by Mr Barroso on that. He doesn't ever respect the result of democratic referendums, whether they're in France, the Netherlands or Ireland. He says we must ignore them. We must continue. It's all about power. It's all about him and the EU institutions getting more power at the expense of the member states. I hope the Irish tell you all where to go in the second referendum on October the 2nd, and they just might. Now you're telling us we have to have a Commissioner for Immigration taking away from nation states their most basic right to decide who comes to live, work and settle in their countries. You've pushed on with your obsession with climate change which has led to massive cost and no material benefits whatsoever. But above all, it's when you ignored that Irish referendum, it's when you said the Irish cannot stop this treaty. For that reason alone, I simply cannot support you. And what an expensive club it's becoming. Just two years ago, Britain's net contribution was £3 billion a year. This year it's £6 billion. Next year it will be £8 billion. The year after that, it's due to be £10 billion. And now we hear that you want to take away the British rebate. You want to get rid of the British rebate, which will mean by 2013, our contribution will be £13 billion. It will have quadrupled in the space of six years. And simply, the taxpayers of Britain, realising all of this, seeing your direct tax, will conclude that we simply can't afford the European Union. But I do see a ray of hope. The Deauville deal between Merkel and Sarkozy, the thing that you're all so terrified of today, I hope it happens. Let's have a new treaty. You yourself seem to be almost supporting it. Let's have a new European treaty and let's put it to a referendum in lots of countries, particularly in Britain, and the British people will conclude that this is a very bad deal for Britain. They'll vote for us to leave the European Union and begin the unravelling. Thank you. Well, we're happy to go. Thank you. I owe no allegiance to that flag and nor to most of the people in Europe either.